All right, guys, today we're going to be breaking up the monotony of EDC survival and talking about something that is arguably actually still related to survival, but I haven't done a bow video in ages, and so today we are going to be going over my new bow and how it actually is tied into some of my older bows. So without any further ado, let's jump into it. Hopefully enjoy the bow content. I know it's a little bit different, but we're going to be going over this one, talking about it, and talking a little bit why I love bows so much. So first off, this bow is tied to some of my older bows because this is a Ben Pearson 709 Hunter. Hopefully you guys can see that there. And I used to, for those who don't know, who have been around on the channel for a very long time, you will actually know that I used to have a 709 Hunter and I really love these bows. Primarily because, as I've talked about in other videos, I love the beautiful zebra wood risers. That matched with the fact that this has essentially a target grip or a target pistol grip, if you will. This is a really incredibly comfortable handle to use as far as actual shooting goes. In my opinion too, lastly, I think the 709 Hunter is a very special bow because it is a very fast or reasonably fast traditional bow. Now obviously I say traditional because these things are not as fast as a compound bow, will never be and just can't be physically. So so obviously take that for what it's worth and of course this is a vintage old school bow so it's not going to be 100% perfect but overall pretty great bow pretty happy with it you guys can see those beautiful zebra wood um, knocking points or tips to the bow and overall this is actually probably in better condition than my first or original 709 Hunter so all of that combined makes this a really incredible bow. I love just about everything about it. Now, of course, you guys probably know that I am a fan of archery. I like shooting bows because it is fun. It's honestly very stress relieving, especially uh, more very similar to shooting firearms. And the nice part is it can be done in a lot more places because of course it is quiet. It doesn't have as much distance. So you don't have to worry about, you know, as many regulations on shooting bows as you do firearms. So for a litany of reasons, I like bows a little bit more than firearms in that regard. Obviously, I still love both, but uh, yeah. So anyways, that is kind of an overview of the bow. I do, like I said, love archery myself. And let's talk about this particular 709 Hunter. So this one in particular, once again, like most of my vintage bows, I managed to get off of eBay. And I will still say that I think if eBay is one of the best places to find good bows because a bow, if you were to get a you know modern recurve bow like this, you would be even like, if you're talking about the most basic elementary bows, you're gonna be talking about, you know, at least $300 for something like a Samick Sage, and that's not a bad price, but you can still, so long as you're savvy, get um, bows like this for under $200. So still, if you're looking for a way to get into bows, um, and even like if you're not entry level and you just want something nice, uh, this is a really good way. eBay is a really good way to get them. Now, like I said, patience is key. I did not find this overnight. So if you have a particular bow, and that's kind of one of the disadvantages to being someone like myself, I have a particular like want and desire for a certain type and style of bow. But if you're not going for that then just going after something reputable is the way to go. So anyways that is the core of it. Of course you have that beautiful zebra wood riser um, as you guys can see there. It is just absolutely gorgeous. Love looking at that wood so much. Here is the other side for those who love looking at it as well. But anyways Moving on to the next point of this bow. So, like I said, that's the core, it's the actual bow itself, but the bow string. So this bow string is very hard to see, not physically per se, but it is a dark, dark purple and black. And of course, for those who don't know, dark purple is one of my favorite colors, and I thought the black would be a nice offset color. So maybe this will pick it up pretty well. I'm fairly uncertain. It probably, in the viewfinder, it all looks black to me but um, hopefully you guys can kind of pick that up and see. I don't know how it will end up turning out in post, but anyways, it is purple and black, and it is a Flemish twist bowstring from America's Best Bowstrings. Of course, I've got my little knocking point there to help with knocking arrows, and then lastly, to make this thing really quiet, and it's hard to kind of express in this video, um, but to make it 
really, really quiet. I doubled up string suppressors, so you can get these little silicone wishbone um, string suppressors off of places like Amazon, once again, for very cheap, you know, like under 10 bucks. And so that is what's sitting on here is little silicone um, bow string silencers. And even though they do look very small, and even though I do have them doubled up on both sides, as you can tell, um, it is incredibly quiet. Like these little silicone wishbones, they really do dampen the sound of the bow. Like it doesn't seem like they would because they're so small and you know, they don't really seem like much, but they really do make this thing incredibly quiet. And if you are gonna hunt with traditional bows, especially if you're gonna hunt, you do want to have string suppressors if you're just going to the range to shoot and you know kind of play around with a bow or if you're going to your backyard to do the same you don't really need string suppressors they don't really you know do anything outside of suppress the sound of your bow so you don't really need them they're not like a functional necessity to the bow they're not going to work better they're not going to make your arrows fly faster but if you do intend to hunt they are nice to have in addition to if you also just dislike the twang of a bow it is very nice to have the suppressors on there so anyways that is those guys of course if you guys can't tell already they are purple to match the bowstring once again the bowstring is very dark so it is hard to actually see that it is purple but trust me guys it is a very very dark purple and black uh, on the bowstring to really round it out so anyways i thought once again there's not too too much to talk about on this bow but this is a ben pearson Ben Pearson is one of my favorite brands. Another one that is honestly good is the old school vintage Bear. Now, Bear does still make good bows and you can even buy, I believe, traditional bows from them to this day. But if you buy like a modern traditional um, Bear like recurve, you're gonna be looking at spending like 700 to $800. Whereas if you go and find a vintage traditional, you know, uh, Bear archery, um, but you can be, you know, expecting to spend about like 200 bucks. So, you know, big price difference there. And once again, I think personally, the build quality on these is just as good, if not better, than their modern contenders. And especially like these Ben Pearsons, like this is built every bit as good as a modern bow and i'm here to tell you if you were to get a bow that's of this quality like nowadays like buy a brand new one you would easily be spending over a thousand dollars which is the thing that blows my mind the most about these like ben pearson 709 hunters is the build quality is absolutely incredible like it is right up there once again with like the best of things that you would be purchasing today but if you were to purchase a bow that was like this like brand new today you'd be easily spending over a thousand dollars on this and on ebay you can buy a used model that's in pretty darn good condition for like i paid sub 200 dollars, so totally totally worth it and once again there are some things as i've mentioned in previous videos like this bose riser is made out of zebra wood and you can't even really get zebra wood anymore so there's a level of like you can't actually even replicate this bow even if you had a modern maker that had the capability of you know actually like manufacturing it um, the materials themselves are no longer as plentiful or readily accessible so anyways guys hopefully you enjoyed the video as always god bless and i'm out